Hi everyone, it's Brittany. Uh, today's video is about using video games and play to help our children um, work through uncomfortable situations. And so as I've been working more with children and kind of reflecting on dyna dynamics with um, you know, parenting, caregivers, wanting to help support the, like, the growth and development of little ones, you know, um, teenagers, young adults, through gameplay, I noticed that there's this um, sometimes a difficult part of allowing our children to to be discomfort, uh, sit in the discomfort of struggle and conflict. And and I, I note this when you know let's say let's say that a a child is or a teenager you know is struggling in a group play. You know they're they're playing with a group of friends or people that they don't even know and they're arguing, you know, they're either typing, arguing, or chatting, arguing, like using a headset, and they can't come to the same conclusion or like reach some type of agreement for what to do. And um, sometimes parents will shut down the process of reaching a conclusion by telling their child to get off the game, like stop, you know, like there's, there's arguing, don't, you don't have to deal with it, just like log off, play later. Um, or play by yourself. And so so my my side note to that is if there's bullying going on, if there's disrespect, yes, I think it's a good idea to, you know, take a break, play by yourself. Either or, or and, that is a great combination to learn how to kind of um, cool off before engaging in problem solving with someone who doesn't agree with you. That's a great idea, um, a great strategy. Um, I also want to throw in the consideration, let's say that, you know, kids are arguing about what game to play. Like, so I, I'm using Fortnite right now, right? And there's different options. You can do creative mode, you can do duos, you can do squads, and there's different games within creative mode. You can just build for fun, you can do um, one versus one, you can do like box fights. They're all different options and you have to uh, kind of come to the similar conclusion to play with your friends or else you're not gonna do anything. You're just gonna sit there in the lobby arguing or um, getting you know sulky about who's not getting their way. And so um, that is practice for future relationship work. You know, friends argue. And the powerful part of play is that it's, it, even though it is kind of like pretend, it's a real dynamic, it's a real relationship, it's a real problem to figure out how to solve, is real personalities and real, um, real emotions that come into the dynamic of playing a game. So again, it could be just a game, but that's why it's also p powerful and safe to explore, um, to explore difficult dynamics and heightened emotions. Like as, as an adult can come in, uh, or an adult can come in or someone who's a little bit more more calm, a little bit more experienced with working through conflict can kind of coach the kids. Or you can just sit back and let them and see what happens. I think that sometimes we try and swoop in and protect our children because we're afraid that, you know, they're going to have hurt feelings. We're, we don't want to see our children hurt. You know, it hurts to see our children in pain. And, and But the thing about that is like it's building muscle memory, you know. Um, it's building these calluses, you know, calluses around your heart, calluses around, you know, um, exercising this muscle of speaking your truth and being okay with people disagreeing. Because we, we don't want our children to shut down in the future. We don't want them to um, not know how to engage with people in the future. Like as an adult, young adult, you know, um, we're hoping that the, the life experiences and things that we show them will help them prepare for the future as an adult when we are no longer there to handhold them. We're no longer there to always be there for them. And so when we have an opportunity to watch them play or guide them through conflict or just watch, I think these are all important things to do. So like you can have a baseline of watching how does my child, how does the gamer in my life deal with conflict? Okay, are they um, nerd raging? Are they kind of getting so upset that they turn off the game and quit? You know, they rage quit. Um, are they kind of blaming other people? You know, again, these are this is a microcosm of real world things. Gaming and play can do that. When you see a conflict, you see a problem, you get to look into someone's way of viewing problem solving. You get to see the gamer or your child and see, okay, they have a problem. 
with other people. They have a problem in the game. How are they going to approach this problem? Are they going to quit? Are they going to look up solutions? Are they going to be diplomatic? Are they going to be brave enough to speak? Are they going to share what they want? Or are they going to be quiet? All these things about personality and cognition come out when you're watching a child play, when you're watching a gamer engage with other people or work through a challenge or a quest line in the game that they're playing. And so again, I, I just want to note that, you know, it is scary to watch. It's scary and frustrating and sad and painful to watch your child struggle. And that's what can happen sometimes when you see your child go through hard times when they're playing or when they're gaming. You don't want to see your child struggle. You don't want to see them in pain. You don't want to see them angry. And yet in life, that's what's going to happen. You know, um, we get angry. We feel pain. And what happens? We, we live to see another day. We know that, you know, may, maybe parts of our lives can be painful and frustrating and difficult like it is right now. We can weigh all these things and yet we can learn to adapt. We can learn to seek the tools that we need and resources that we need that are available to grow and take care of ourselves. We can do the same thing for the gamers and the children in our life by watching how they first, um, their default ways of responding to stress, their default ways of responding to conflict. And then when we have the space to do so, if our children allow us to sit with them and watch them play, we can actually coach them through the conflict. You know, okay, what's going on? Okay, so I see that there's options here. What does everyone want to do? What do you want to do? You know, and then you talk about the problem solving process. Okay, what would happen if you decide to do this? You know, what would happen if you wanted to try this? What would you say? How would you ask your friends? You know, if you disagreed, is that okay? It's okay to disagree. You know, sometimes we think that if we disagree, we're not friends anymore. And that's something that I know is very black and white. We want to teach our children that there's a bunch of gray. You know, you, you don't have to play with your friends every day and still be friends. You can disagree with your friends and still be friends. You can have different preferences, different likes, and still be friends. And these are all things that I see and encourage parents to do. And I try to do my best with the gamers that I have when I work with them in gaming as well. There is a bunch of gray and nuance when it comes to relationships and who we are as individuals. And that's something that can be nurtured through relationship dynamics. And so this was my spiel on, um, on using games and play to help nur nurture this, this space to be uncomfortable with our kids because again, it's this muscle memory and practice that you wanna have because again, later in life, there's gonna be, we're gonna go through changes. We're gonna go through grief and loss. We're gonna go through so many things that we're gonna need this foundation to know that we are resilient, that we can overcome. And even though we're feeling hard, um, terrible at the moment, even though we're feeling sad or you know frustrated, we know that the tools are there or we know how to find tools. And I think that's what gaming can provide any player, you know, any age, you can learn that, okay, this is a frustrating part of the game. This is a frustrating in exchange with the gamers that I'm playing with. And yet I know it will not always be like this because we can learn to discuss the problem. We can learn to reach um, a respectful agreement or some type of um, solution that maybe both of us don't really agree with it, but it's like the best solution so far. You know, and then sometimes we can find a better game to play that kind of caters to our individual preferences. Because again, there's so many games available. It, it, it really helps to kind of be open-minded and look for the solutions and the things that make you happy when you play. Because I'm hoping when you play, you're happy and you don't feel forced to do it because you feel like there's no other way to connect or play, you know. So options are important again. So again, this is my blurb on, um, you know, the, I know the frustration that parents may be going through. You know, I, I admire every parent that I meet. You guys are doing an amazing job. I, again, um, you are the, the experts here when it comes to your children and I'm just offering an additional perspective on how to use games um, to help support the, the problem solving skills. And again, um, expanding this space of feeling uncomfortable because again children can do it they're resilient and we can kind of give them the safe space to learn how to be 
more empowered by being uncomfortable first and then learning how to solve their own problems with your love and support and that's what children need you know they're able to solve many of their smaller problems because they feel loved and safe to approach the problem so and again thanks everyone for watching uh, i know it's rambled but i appreciate the listen and if you have any other examples or suggestions on how to use games to help support gamers and children please let me know in the comments below bye everyone